Hey, what's up, good people? Again, man, it's uh, James Harris doing this video on uh, tough currency conversations. Um, in light of which everything that's going on, I think it's important that we are um, having these conversations with our children just to ensure that, one, they're feeling okay, and then, two, just to make sure that, um, you know, we're the ones who are educating them on these discussions before the peers educate them and or the media, um, because we know all information is not good information. So. Uh, by us doing it, we can, um, I guess, ensure they're getting the proper information that we feel is, is relevant to the cause. Um, so tough parenting conversations, I understand it can be difficult, but, you know, we got to have them. Um, that's part of parenting. So <clears throat> to be real with you, um, some of the difficult conversations that I personally find uh, just hard to have with probably anybody, let alone our children, uh, would be um, different skin tones such as uh, race and ethnicity, um, of course, molestation or being touched inappropriately, um, gender identity, you know, whether they like somebody of the opposite sex or they got these urges within themselves, um, religion, you know, because most of the time we feel that religion is um, inherited probably, or what are they thinking about uh, branching out to another religion? Um, so, you know, that's one of the conversations. And of course, substance use, we want to ensure that they're educated on those things, those topics, um, and career, depending on the age of your child, you know, so that can be a tough topic too, uh, because you probably want to live vicariously through your child, you know, like you wanted to be a football player or basketball player, but your son want to do computers or, you know, whatever the case is, so that can be a difficult one. Um, <clears throat> so. I would suggest um, just diving in how to that conversation. It's no such thing as a perfect time, but you do want to ensure that you can focus and give them attention. So preferably would probably be best on like a weekend or something because they're not in school or you're probably not at work. So it'd be good for you guys to exchange that dialogue. Um, don't sit around and wait for it to happen. You got to make it happen. You know, that's part of your job as a parent. Hey. Um, be as open and candid as possible based on the age of your child. Um, you know, I got a 13-year-old and an 8-year-old living with me, so you can imagine, and they're both girls, uh, young women, so you can imagine the conversations that we're having in here. Um, but I'm more direct, I'm assertive, and uh, I try to articulate so they understand these tough conversations and why I'm having them. And I try to model a certain behavior so they can understand that they can come to me with anything and um, I'll do my best to answer them or assist them in finding the research and we process this together. Um, so be prepared to encounter like being uncomfortable within that responses, you know, whether it's a, a blank stare or just something that's like, that you felt educated on coming from them. Cause you got to remember they out there in the schools, uh, you know, eight hours a day, then they probably got out the school program. So by the time they get around you, they got all these other outside influences such as media, social media, that appears on the, you know, basketball team and stuff like that. So um, you might be educated on some, whether that's slang terminology or new drugs or uh, the texting, um, you know, the, the phrases and stuff like that. So just be prepared for anything because you're not sure what will come of it. You know, you might educate them, but too, they might as well educate you. So I think it's important also to uh, rehearse beforehand just so you can be prepared for those emotional responses as well as um, center your emotions just in case you hear something that's troubling. You want to keep your composure so they wouldn't feel that you're angry with them or the decision that they made. So like, let's just say you guys are talking about uh, substance use or drugs and your son or daughter say, oh yeah, I try cigarettes or I smoke weed at a party. You're not, you know, going belligerent or irate. Like, what are you doing? That's irresponsible. Da -da -da. So if you rehearse beforehand, potentially you can have that calmness and the demeanor to where they'll want to continue to open up to you. Um, but I understand if like you're talking about molestation and, and your kids say that it was touched inappropriately, uh, it may, you know, any rehearsal might not, um, assist you with that, but it's, it's best to rehearse beforehand just so you can center yourself, have your composure ready just in case you do hear something uncomfortable and or you want them to also view you as somebody with it together so they can um, be open to coming to you. <clears throat> and uh, it's important also to speak on the level that they understand. Again, I got a 13-year-old and an 8-year-old, so 
I'm articulating in such a way that they both can process the information, um, keep it short, direct, straightforward, just based on my personality. But you know your children more or better than I do, so you want to ensure that you keep it simple um, and use terminology and stuff that they're familiar with, whether that is getting down to that level, talking in slang, or um, making them rise to your level and enhancing their vocabulary on certain things, you know. So, again, you know your children more than I do, so ensure that you speak on that level, whatever that means. Um, the, to me, one of the most important things is to validate their feelings within that moment. Um, so... <clears throat> Validating the feelings is definitely beneficial in numerous of cases, especially dealing with uh, young people or adults for that matter. To validate somebody's feelings, letting them know that it's a certain level of empathy there. So, like, um, you know, you can express it just basically, how do you feel? Does that make you sad? Or um, did I answer all your questions? Or, you know, tell me more. Help me understand. That's probably one of my phrases, my most uh, phrases I use with my young ones. Help me understand why you feel that way. What can I do better? You get, okay, I, it looks like you're upset, you know, so that way um, they want to continue the discussion or elaborate their feelings within that discussion. Um, <clears throat> that's important. And like to, to wrap it up, to be honest with you, uh, check back in after the conversation because you want to ensure that they done research and or are feeling better after you guys had that conversation. Now that they know, oh, my dad's cool, my mom is cool, we just had this conversation and they didn't fly off the hook. Um, you also want them to know that, you know, they're healthy, they're loved, and they're supported by you, see, regardless of those conversations. Um, and that happened because you validated that feeling. So to be honest with you, again, there's no real way to have these conversations. All these conversations are tough dealing with children, but we want to ensure in light of everything that's going on that they um, feel protected by us and they know that they can come to us with anything. Because realistically, um, they're gonna go back to school soon. You know, we wanna ensure that they're not dealing with the stresses from COVID, they're not dealing with the stresses from what they're seeing in the media with the riots and protests and stuff like that, or just get that taking feelings on them. You know, they're young adults, but we have to ensure that their opinions matter, you know, because they got their views on situations, so that's like we have our views on situations. So hit me up, man, you got any questions? Um, but that's it, mentalhill.com. If you do have any questions or email me or hit me on IG, appreciate your time.